Hey, this is John from Alloy211. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an early era military bolt action rifle and a late era military bolt action rifle. The early era military bolt action rifle, being the one that bottom of your screen here, the Swiss Vetterli, is adopted in 1869 in 10.4 by 38 millimeter, commonly known as 41 Swiss. It was a black powder rim fire cartridge shooting between 1300 and 1400 feet per second depending on the weight of the bullet either i believe 313 grains or 334 grains the overall length of the Vetterli is 51 and 3 16 inches the barrel length is 33 and about 3 16 inches the weight is 10 and about 3 16 pounds it had a tubular magazine holding 11 rounds and at the time of its adoption 1869 was really cutting edge for really any military rifle. Not only was it bold action, which was, this is very early in the bold action era, but it was also magazine fed. Switching gears and looking at the much later K98K, which was adopted by Germany in 1935, although it is based off of the early Gewehr designs, earlier designs, um, it is kind of the culmination of the Mauser design. And really is by many considered to be the pinnacle of military adopted bold action rifles. Anyway, the K98K was adopted in 1935 in 7.92 by 57, smokeless powder, 8 millimeter Mauser, uh, had a, with a 198 grain bullet, averaged about 2,500 feet per second. The overall length for the K98K is about 43 and 3 quarters inches. The barrel length is 23 and 5 eighths inches, and it weighs 8.2 pounds to 8.5 pounds, roughly. It is also magazine fed, but it uses a five round stripper clip. So it doesn't have as big of a capacity as the Vetterli. You know, Vetterli does hold six more rounds, but the stripper clips are a lot faster to load than this tubular magazine. So that's an advantage there. There are other advantages too, by not using a tubular magazine. One, you don't have the weight of the gun shift as you fire. And two, you don't have to have any sort of mechanical lifting system here. You just have a spring. Which, granted, I mean, you could, I guess, argue that the spring is mechanical as well, but it's not any moving parts. It is just a spring. So, many advantages in manufacturing and just function just right there. And there's uh, something you can see is a clear difference in design that really by 1935, they had brought the simplicity of the design of the bolt action rifle to pretty much its pinnacle. Although there is another bolt action rifle that was in service in World War II that was designed much later and does have some more unconventional features that the K98K does not have. So we'll maybe take a look at that towards the end of the video. Now, as I said earlier, the overall length of the Vetterli is 51 and 3 16 inches long compared to the K98K's 43 and 3 quarters. That's a difference of about 7 and 3 8 inches overall length. And that's quite a bit. And not only by 1935 had they shortened rifles really this is something that after world war one pretty much all the militaries realized at that point you really didn't need to have such a long barrel and part of the reason why the Vetterli has such a long barrel at 33 and 3 16 inches compared to the ken ks go ahead and move those all the way back there so we can get a good idea of the difference uh, the K98K's 23 and 5 8 inch barrel. Part of that has to do with smokeless powder compared to black powder. Black powder burns differently than smokeless powder. With smokeless powder, you can get higher velocity with a shorter barrel. But not only that, it's also the handiness of the, of the firearm. And the thought that with a longer barrel, you have longer range. But again realizing that most encounters happen at shorter ranges it wasn't necessary to have a gun that could hit a man-sized target at a thousand yards because really a person can't see a man-sized target very well without telescopic sights anyway so a lot of those kind of became moot and having the longer barrel especially once you've moved to pointed smokeless uh, ammunition there wasn't a lot of point to it and it made the rifle much handier so you can see a Big difference by this point in design of barrel length. And not only that, also weight. You know, you have the K98K, which you could easily carry around all day at about eight and a half pounds. And not to say that at 10 and 316 pounds, the Vetterli is overly heavy, 
but you add in its weight and its length and it definitely is going to be a lot more awkward to carry all day long than a K98K. And people, a lot of people don't consider, you know, two or three pounds to be that much, but it really can be. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the bolts and the way they come out of the guns because this is also a big advancement from this point to this point. With the K98K, to remove the bolt, all you have to do is, well one, you want to make sure your flag safety is in the upright position, the safe position. And well, lift your bolt handle, pull your bolt back, you have the bolt stop right there, and you just pull it right out of the back, it just pulls right out. Now to take the bolt, set this down, maybe, oh there we go, I'll probably trip over that later. To take the bolt out of the Vetterly, you can't just lift it and pull it out, there's our elevator for cartridges, but you can't just lift it and pull it out. You do have a wedge right here, I'll grab my handy Mosin tool, that you will need to push out in order to remove the bolt, but you still, still can't remove the bolt. And that is because you have to remove this screw right here. We'll use our Mosin tool, I think. Oh yeah. Mosin tool, handiest, handiest gun tool I've ever had. Oh God, don't scratch the gun. So you have to remove this screw, and then you have to tilt this out, and you have to actually pull, tilt it forward, and pull it out. Yep, and there's your elevator. There's your, works your elevator up and down. The spring is actually kind of a cool little assembly. But this sticks up into, now I gotta pull our wedge back out into this recess in the bottom of the bolt. So in order to pull the bolt out, you have to take this out. So you have to remove a screw, remove the elevator, remove this just to get this out. Now you can really easily remove the firing pin from this, which I'm not going to do at the moment, but I will in a second. Um, really easily remove the firing pin from this just by unscrewing it. So. Let's go ahead and, and we'll leave it. We'll leave it out. I'm gonna do this. There's a spring underneath here and it is now compressed and it is going to have a lot of oomph when I do this. So let's hope let's hope it's not let's hope it's not too bad. There we go. I when I say a lot of oomph, it's really a pretty short spring, but it it does have a lot of pressure on it. So whoa, whoa. Now, to disassemble the bolt, it is really simple to disassemble this bolt. As you just unscrew this cap, pull off this spring, pull off this cover, there's your firing pin, there, ah, there. There's your bolt handle and your locking lugs, your locking lugs which are not part of the bolt. Now you can see your firing pin, well, your rim firing pins here, which are acted on by this firing pin. Um, these can be converted to center fire now. A lot of people do that. Um, so if you did want to fire this since the 41 Swiss is a pretty obsolete round, you can do that. Anyway, that's the Vetterly bolt taken apart. As you can see, it's got some pretty shallow, well, as you can see now, it's got some pretty shallow locking lugs and they're part of the bolt handle, not part of the bolt body. So that's kind of important. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the K98K bolt and see how it's really advanced from this to this. It's now a one-piece bolt with a giant, <coughs> pardon me, with a giant extractor over here. Although, I mean, this isn't a bad extra extractor really, or uh, yeah, extractor for the time. It's on the top, it's actually pretty engaging. But this big claw extractor, that's really great, especially once you want to smoke less powder and you have higher chamber pressures and all that. And it's one piece. And you can see the locking lugs, instead of being at the back of the bolt, are at the front of the bolt. 
and you have a little safety locking lug right here, right there. So you have got a lot of stuff going on compared to this bolt. And not only that, like I said, the locking lugs are part of this bolt. They aren't a separate piece on the bolt handle. And you can get away with that. Part of the reason why you get away with that is because this is smokeless powder. And this is actually a really strong lock for smokeless powder. Or not smokeless powder, black powder. No, this would be a horrible lock for smokeless powder. And, well, I mean, some people did find that out later when they made some smokeless conversions of these guns. And they were just so-so on that strength category. So, yes. Good for black powder. Not smokeless powder. Good for smokeless powder. And still good today. I mean, a lot of firearms, a lot of bolt action rifles still use this basic Mauser action. Anyway, to disassemble a bolt, it's really, really simple. You have a little plunger right here. You just push up and then you rotate. Now, when you do this, you do want to make sure that you have that flag safety in the safe disassembly position. There you go. Now you've got Access to your firing pin, your spring, all that. I'm not going to take this part anymore because you don't really need to. And a soldier in the field wouldn't need to, really. And part of that, I think, is why it's so easy to access the firing pin on the Vetterlees. Because they thought, well, that's the thing that you'll probably need to get in the field. Easy access to. You don't really need to pull the whole bolt out. So, But then to put the K98K bolt back together, you just... Put the firing pin back in the bolt body and screw it back on. There we go. Now we're good. And then to put it back in the gun, kind of set this mess over here. It's not a mess. It's it's really cool. And I actually, I really, I really like this design for when it was made. But when you compare it to something much later, obviously. There are a lot more parts for that. Okay, in order to put the K98K bolt back in, simply line the lugs back up into the body, pull the lever out, push it forward, push the magazine down because it does have a last round hold open for a bolt action. I, I don't know, honestly, I've never really cared for that, but I understand it. And something else I did want to mention as well is if you look at the back sights, which the sights, again, on the Vetterly for the time are great. But if you notice, it has these big projections. And earlier, Gewehr, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Earlier Gewehr rifles, their back sight had a, the longest Gewehr, where it had big kind of humps on the sides like that. In fact, bigger than that. And that's something, again, you see, they just really go away from around before World War I. So around that time. Okay, now let's put the Vetterly back together. Okay, first thing, slide the bolt handle back on. There we go, bolt handle's on. Okay, after putting the bolt handle back on, now we'll get to putting it back into the gun. First things first, make sure that your wedge is pulled to the side. Slide your bolt in, slide the wedge over. Then take your elevator and your plate and its lifter. Get this turned up here. Good. Oh, you have some recesses cut here and here. That's where the elevator goes with. Trying to not slide things around on the table. Oh, goes right in there. Along with that plate, you want to make sure you have the bolt handle pulled all the way to the back. All the way to the back as far as you can, so that way the elevator can go all the way up. And then you can tip this floor plate down. And it's got a wedge back here. Let me see if I can pop that back out since I just put it back in. No. As you can see, we'll bring it up here. There you can. It's got a beveled edge there, and that locks in in front of the trigger guard. There we go. Now that's back in. I'm going to go ahead and, well, go ahead and slide the bolt handle all the way forward onto the bolt and lock it in place. 
And then I'm going to push the bolt forward and lock it just to hold it there while I manipulate the rifle. It makes it a little easier. Now I'm going to get that to where it goes. Put the screw back in, making sure it's lined up. You, know, you don't want to cross thread it. And then just tighten it in with our handy dandy Mosin the Gaunt tool. There we go. Now the bolt's back in the Vetterly. Go ahead and re reassemble it. Slide the firing pin. Probably help if I slid in there the right side down with the sear down. Or the, yeah, the sear engagement down. You know, how about I just pull all that back off so you can see that. Okay. Firing pin in. Spring in. Cover on, cap, screwed in place, there we go, Jesus, okay, now there you go, all good, all back together, quick, easy, easy, not really so much, you know, and another difference you'll notice between these two rifles, is just in the line of the stock. Go ahead and bring it out wide so you can actually see. Might be good. If you look at the way this stock is aligned and into your shoulder, it's got a much straighter line of sight into your shoulder, whereas this has a much further drop. So this is just, again, something that changed in that time between this era of when this was made and how rifles were designed and the 1930s. And this is a change that actually came again quite a bit before this rifle was made. Now, something you may have noticed on the K98K, it has locking lugs up in the front of the receiver, whereas the Vetterly has them in the back, and they're not attached to the bolt. Now, there is another rifle that I, I have an example of, made late in the military bolt action rifle era, the Moss 36. Also has well, we pull the bolt out. Has rear locking lugs, but they are one piece part of the bolt and a smooth front. And it was designed much later than the K98K, as this was designed in the early 30s taken into service in 1936. So in some ways you can see some similarities between this and the Vetterly actually, but I mean, obviously still totally different. Interesting that it has the rear locking lugs. It's, it's really an interesting rifle. I really like the Moss 36 a lot, but really not what I would call a good example of a late era military bolt action rifle, just because it really wasn't used a whole lot. And the French didn't do a whole lot of fighting uh, before the point at which they were overrun. So the Moss 36, one, it wasn't out there as much as what it probably could have been. And also, well, they kind of were overrun too quickly for it to really be used for much. So anyway, hopefully you found that interesting and informative. I mean, obviously in 1869, I would love to be armed with this. And in 1935, I... Okay, well, really, I'd rather have an M1 Grand probably than the K98K, but if I had to choose a bold action rifle, I would probably take the K98K over anything else. So you can see differences, advancements that were made, some things that stayed the same. You know, something that stayed the same that's really important, they both have sling mounts. So even in 1869 and before, they realized you need to be able to carry your rifle. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, I'd hope. I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. If you watch some of my other videos and you like those too, I would appreciate if you subscribed. Thanks for watching and have a great day.